House Torres has returned. After a brutal civil war following years of Bonaparte rule, the scion of the exiled Torres heir, Castora seized power with the help of Japan and other allies. With Napoleon II exiled to his family estate in Corsica and barred from political office or station, as well as that of his descendants, the future is bright for the ancient family of Logodoro. Yet the task of rule is perhaps not as easy as Simone Torres had imagined. Over a decade of poor rule and policy, the Sardinian economy is in a state of abject poverty and the nation is no longer seen as a great power. With the aid of a new class of traders and industrialists, as well as that of the old wealthy families of Sardinia, the economic decline recovers with trust in a king who is at heart a conservative, new factories springing up across the nation. Yet respect and prestige is not so simple. Having journeyed deep in the heart of Borneo, exploring for the Japanese emperor, Simone sees a path to great power status through exploration and beating the other great nations to the heart of darkness. This is the fourth part of the grand campaign in Victoria 3. I'm also happy to announce that the campaign now has a wiki with a link in the description. Our government is currently made up of the far right, the conservatives, the church, the reactionaries, the village interests, the aristocrats, the military, and the business interests. Opposing parties are the agrarians, the left, which are the bureaucratic, the bureaucrats, the liberals, the radical liberals, and then the PSI, a communist party, which is borderline outright banned of trade unionists and the professional interests. We gotta build up the rest of these bureaucratic buildings to be able to deal with things. We're training the next generation of bureaucrats and academics currently in our university, so hopefully they will be able to be up to the challenge of administering an empire on the cusp of rebirth. We're doing a lot of exploring too, and given specifically that Simon Torres himself is an explorer in the lore, uh, he, he was a part of several Japanese and joint uh, Japanese Sardinian East India Company expeditions that went into like the really deep regions of Borneo, which had been unexplored to meet some tribes there. So he has a spirit for exploration. Whether he, he may not be able to lead the expeditions himself, but he certainly would seek for our nation to do it in his stead and live vicariously through them. So let's go ahead and do another uh, expedition. We'll send one to the Niger River Delta. Despite many attempts to navigate it, the full course of this river remains a mystery. Shall we send the expedition to attempt to plot the course of the river? Members of the trade societies have expressed their interest in promoting a new Africa policy based on increased commerce and the volation of course of Sardinian values on the land. They have emphasized the necessity of plotting the Niger River for use as a commercial avenue and proposed an expedition for the source. We'll send Ludovico Mizacapo. After weeks of preparation travel, the expedition to plot the course of the river at Niger led by Ludovico Mizacapo has arrived at their starting point. The tide was low, so early in the morning. Our steamboat uh, slowed its pace at the first glimpse of vegetation, carbuncled among the port buildings like modest emeralds. The salt-filled air was generally replaced by grains of paradise, any seeds, clothes. On one of the roofs, a young girl dried her laundry. Onward. We have a long way to go if we're starting down here, my god. Government, administrations, universities, opera houses, and arts academies. We are very much trying to centralize our popularity with the nobles, the burghers, and the wealthy, who have all the political capital in our country. Simon's no fool, he knows that. They have a whopping 49% of political power in Sardinia, the capitalists, followed by the engineers, who would be in a similar bracket. So we're doing our best to provide them a high standard of life and good standard of living. Let's increase our government wages again. Actually get our prestige standards high again and have the professional bureaucratic interest starting to support us. Both of them are not currently, so it'd be a good idea to get the people running our government supporting the king. I recently translated of Budislav Horky have become popular within the movement of enact oligarchy. The relationship has developed to the point that Budislav Horky openly endorses the movement. Uh, he's, a, he's a reactionary exiled agitator. We don't hate the Isle of Oligarchy, uh, so we're, uh, we, we won't actually intervene in this. We'll just let it go as it is. How is our military looking? Like I said, we are looking to start a war of Rome. We have looked to start one ever since Simon took power. 47 battalions versus 21. We could take them on. It could well be that another country in Europe joins, so we have to be a little careful here. We could actually get an alliance with Egypt if we wanted to. That's very unexpected after taking the Suez Canal from them. I mean, Napoleon II did a lot of diplomacy with them. We could get back into a de uh, defensive pack with the Brazilians. We've been trying to reconcile with them for a while. Let's see if we can do that. We can. We'll send an ambassador to uh, Rio to speak with the government there and see if we can return to our old ways. Again, it was their government 
that uh, supported Napoleon II. We'd been allies up until that point, and we've been trying to reconcile with them ever since that war. As the expedition encounters a group of suspicious traitors, one of the men claims to be a Scandinavian ambassador kidnapped by the mercenaries. Their hands were stained with the color of earth, grass, and rusty blood. Their faces smiled when they saw us, and I looked at my men with a severe expression. No man smiles this deep in the jungle. One of them approached us, speaking in a foreign language that one of the younger boys could recognize. They're merchants. I want to know if we want to sell anything. Explorers? Another voice shouted, coarse and desperate. These men kidnapped me months ago. Thieves, mercenaries, criminals. I'm the Scandinavian ambassador freeing me from this treacherous fate. The hell is he doing in the Niger Delta? Probably trying to find the capital of the oil, let's be honest. We'll help him. We'll, we'll fire at these vagabonds. We're, we're colonizing Madagascar right now. We're racing with the French and there's gold fields here. Really valuable. Yet again, competing with the French for colonies. Baton Rouge revolted. One of the tribes there re revolted against the Empire of America. Like most of the American population is actually in this timeline made up of like Native Americans still. They've been semi partly incorporated. And then the north is all just Franco-Canadians and French people. A hippopotamus has been sighted further along the river. It might be safer to wait for it to move on rather than try to row past it. We will wait. You do not want to screw up a hippopotamus, one of the most dangerous animals on the planet. And hard to predict. It moved on. Good. We're taking this real slow and real steady. Word arrives from the expedition that several of the members, including Ludovisa Mezacabo, uh, have been kidnapped by a local king who is demanding a ransom. Ransom. God damn it. We'll pay the ransom. We can afford it. We need to find the source of the Niger Delta. We we're not really taken seriously as a major exploring nation in the world right now. We need to do something big to change that. A mining company has collapsed, trapping miners within the dark shafts below. The scale of the accident has made the tragedy a story across Campania and the nation. It's a heavy price, but it is a price King Solomon is willing to pay. After organizing the payment for the ransom, the expedition crew is released unharmed and even sent in the correct direction. It wasn't the most pleasant experience, but we dined on roasted yams and were generally well, well treated. One of the expedition members has caught stealing some more provisions than needed under the excuse that he's ill and needs more food. Unfortunately, he is needed. There should be an option to give him like a, a, a beating. That'd be more accurate historically. We need a lot more engines too. Electromagnetism. Electricity has been discovered. New dynamite. That's the one we really want. The Pope is actually fully supporting us to unify Italy right now. Ironically. Pope Francesco Solaro della Margarita. A hedonist explorer, swimmer, hunter. A very athletic guy. And apparently he likes to sail on ships too. He's, a, he's an admiral and a jingoist. He's a big fan of us. He's actively supporting us to, to unify Italy. So, no war with the Pope. Savoy A is also supporting us. Under Duke Abu Al-Qasim. Oh my god, what the fuck is that? D Abu Al-Qasim Borkelon Fair. That's the, uh, the Castellan dynasty. I mean, you can tell underneath that robe, he's just like absolutely ripped like season season three Uncle Iroh in the Avatar, you know? Same thing. We actually completed the Nigeria expedition. Ludovico Mezzacapo has returned triumphantly. The course and termination of the Niger River has been plotted. I had always imagined I'd feel an immense happiness. A happiness so bright and loud that you'd be able to hear it. All the rivers converge here. Maybe I was expecting the torrent of water, a force so obvious that it couldn't be ignored. But the Niger diverged in smaller streams, almost losing its identity. Which one was the real river? Wouldn't all of them be the real rivers? Perhaps none. As the ship of Theseus. When does a thing stop being a thing? No. He's an explorer now, and we have explored the Niger River. We are now officially one of the great exploration nations in the world. After such a successful expedition, I think we go for the big fish now. Much like the Pope, we're going to catch us a whale. Despite hundreds of years of searching, the source of the Nile still eludes us. Shall we send an expedition to attempt to plot the course of the river? We shall! We'll send Ludovico Mizacapo. After his success in Niger, we'll send him to the source of the Nile. Germany is basically like the crackhead you meet on the street at 3 a.m. who's really fucked up and, and, and could clearly do some very bad things. All the other nations in Europe right now are like people passing by that person on the street. They're not making eye contact. They're making no sudden movements. 
And if that crackhead jumps someone starts beating the shit out of them, they're always going to pretend they don't see it and walk by. That's that's what this is. It's the best uh, geopolitical analytical analogy I can give for this situation, I feel. The most fitting. All right, and we got to build a lot of ports too. A lot of the colonies we're founding in Africa and in Asia do not have ports, so we got to keep an eye on that. Yeah, a lot of countries are getting uh, ironclads now. It's spreading all throughout Europe. The Germans also have them now. We had the naval advantage for several years and didn't use it. That's unfortunate. Not that we can with this military. Simon Torres is not also a big, like, uh, colonizer either, but he is a jingoist, so we do want to take land. Building the military is, like, one of his big priorities, but so is the economy. Kind of balancing both of those. As the expedition encounters a group of suspicious traders, one of the men claims to be a Lithuanian ambassador kidnapped by these mercenaries. First, it was the Scandinavian ambassador lost in the Niger Delta, and now it's the Lithuanian ambassador lost in southern Somalia. God damn. I think these people are all just lying. This, this is an ambassador. There's not all these ambassadors walking around in the jungle. We're going to move on. Goddamn liar. The latest report of the expedition is of several of the crew have come down with cases of uh, dysentery. One member has even died. They will have to wait then. Caradino Galupi, the leader of the professional interest, has make, made a remarkable play for power in the capital in order to secure a spot for professional interests within the government. However, it's not entirely clear if they should be rewarded for their tactics. Are they in our coalition or in our government? No. In fact, they're literally in the Socialist Party. So, I think not. Get back to reading, Marx. The expedition commanded by Giacomo Garcia has returned after years of travel. Future generations will benefit from its achievements. The return home of a large-scale research trip was often not the end, but just the beginning of long-term research. The Danish Galicia expedition may serve as an example. The ship returned 93 containers of zoological, etymological, botanical, and geological contents. Pacific expedition has succeeded. Beautiful. Oceanographic knowledge increases, biological specimens, fossils, theory of revolution, uh, evolution progress, an astronomical object, and Giacomo Garcia is now a naval commander. A beetle has crawled into the ear of Ludovico Mazzacapo. Without immediate medical help, this could impede the expedition's progress. Jesus. We're gonna stop for this man. Jesus Christ. Alright, he needs to get some help with that. That's actually terrifying. Finally! Kubo wants to join our customs union! Welcome back. It's still the military junta, by the way. <laughs> the dictator there. General Fabrizio Faris. He's an, employ an imposing ex-lawyer. Who has a side hustle as philanthropy and refuses to fight. That's a lot of that's a lot of tobacco in our market, is what that is. Ludovico Mazzacapo has returned triumphantly. The source of the Nile River has been discovered. It turns out that the source of the Great Lakes of Africa. Dr. Mezzacapo, I presume. Boy. The roaring sound of the water reminded me of my childhood. A distant blurry line impossible to cross ever again. In my nightmares, I used to drown. The torrent kept going and going like an open wound bleeding out. The heart of Africa, Africa is exposed before us. The dissection of a continent with meticulous care. In my nightmares, I still drown. He's an explorer like we are now. Found the source of the Nile. Yeah, we'll give him a promotion if we can too. Never mind, he's already a Grand Admiral. We literally cannot promote him any higher. King Simon Torres seeks a match with a partner suitably distinguished birth. A uh, Hesse Noble? The Billung family is still around. He has the same name we do. Yeah, sure. Why not? She's a she's a good noble stock. He's a slaver. He's a bigot that checks out. Holy shit! Are they? Do they have slavery? This is in the slave trade. They're isolationist slavers. Who the fuck did we just marry into? His son's a slaver too. Berlin is full of slaves. There's almost half a million slaves in Berlin. What the fuck? Like, they're, they're self-slaving Germans and Pomeranians. Oh my god. The, the Germans of Berlin enslaved the Pomeranians. <laughs> fucking Christ, man. <laughs> that is fucking crazy. I don't know what to think about that. That's just so, so out of left field. It's kind of just insane. The nation celebrates the marital union between the most gracious majesty King Simon and the charming daughter of Grand Duke Simon of Hesse. Is she also going to be a slaver? Jesus. We'll do a grand wedding. We'll, we'll make sure that the wedding is in Cesare so that we can choose who's catering it. I don't trust us to have that wedding in Berlin, I'm going to be honest. There might be some problems. Mexico will be banned for sure. 
They have debt slavery in the Democratic Republic of Mexico. Oh, wow. They have universal suffrage, a parliament. They reform to start to get rid of racial segregation, but they have debt slavery. So it's small. It's, it's not around much anywhere. The only places that has uh, outright slavery is Hesse, I think. We married into the last sla like slaver state in the world. Maybe she's just really thick, you know? Maybe maybe that's why Simone Torres did it. Maybe she's just super thick. You gotta remember, House Torres has a long history of having good taste in uh, middle-aged thick women. So, maybe that was just the only, only noble in Europe who fit that description for our boy. Could well be. Trade agreement with the Somalians. Really starting to pump out a lot of motor, uh, engines again when we just need insane amounts of steel and glass. Simon just looked at the princess and his friend went, bro, her family to slavery, and Simon answered, I can fix it. <laughs> Black. Did we ever have slave laws? I don't think we did. We participated in, in the uh, slave trade during EU4 a little bit, but we weren't actually too active in it. So we lost all our colonies when it, when it actually became a thing. It's not like we can high horror this and be like, oh yeah, we banned slavery early because we're moral. We just lost all our colonies, so we, we couldn't even participate. There will be a lot of... Uh, liberal arts majors in uh, the Napoli College writing about that in a hundred years. Brazil did win that war, by the way, and they pushed further west. Oh, here we go! I said it was steel frame buildings, and we're starting to really roll in the economy now. We'll build up the economy, we'll build up the military, and we're gonna get back to what we do best. Lose wars and then come back harder and win them. A proud tradition of our family and our nation. We're going to come upon your shipyard, and then we're going to naval shipyards. Steam donkey is complete. We'll need way more coal for that, but it'll be very useful. Let's finish Theory of Evolution. We've done so much for in recent years of our expeditions. The Shagatai want us to join their customs union. This is the second time they've asked. They're still being polite about it. We need to very politely decline. We'll send an ambassador to the court of the, uh, to the emperor. Making it clear that it wouldn't be a good idea, as it would, it would harm the Shagatai's economy far too much. And we'd be, we'd be best, uh, we'd be best as simply good trade allies. We're going to economically friend zone the Shagatai right now is what we're going to do. So we're going to decline. Absolutely not. We like you, but we see you as just a friend. Theory of evolution. We are going to work on open hearth process to maximize our steel production given how much we need. We'll try and pass homesteading. Simon Torres knows that he needs to make a concession and he doesn't want to make a democratic one, that's for sure. So we're going to do the one other big political concession we can give right now to try and reduce the widespread unpopularity of the government, which will upset some of his more aristocratic core supporters by a lot, but they also know they've really got no one else to turn to than him, and he would know that as well, right? I mean, that anger could quickly turn into radical revolution. We would So, roleplay-wise, we're kind of going through a bit of a, a, a minor crisis, ordering on almost another civil war or revolution here. Due to the fact, after taking power, Simon Torres, who was put there and formed a government with the old-school nobles, burghers, recent bourgeoisie capitalists formed his power base and, and government gave them huge concessions across the board, including to maintain their right of like, not quite serfdom, but land is almost entirely owned by like a select few, right? And that's reached a breaking point given, obviously all of our people and all the people in the world would be aware that there is an alternative in countries like Germany, where there is literally collective ownership of agriculture. And I'm sure many people in our country wouldn't want that. Some would, most wouldn't, but they'd certainly want a better system. And we are basically being forced to give that. I mean, there's there's seven million of our people who are just outright almost up in arms over this. And if we don't have food from farmers, then our country will not run. Despite us getting so many from the Shagatai. Matteo Guzzone has appeared in Sardinia Korskai. He started a movement to enact state religion. It appears! The Francesco Solaro della Margarita has since one of his uh the members of the clergy to cause problems in our country we're gonna expel him immediately fuck we can't exile him for three almost three years i guess he has diplomatic immunity 
<laughs> it's probably just the uh, the papal ambassador in Cesari doing this. Let's be honest. He's just giving speeches outside the embassy. Open hearth process. Wonderful. We'll go with steel railway cars next. No, rubber will do first. Rubber mastification. Let's make our steel increase massively. Open hearth process. We can another 900 steel. A man in demand. Brazil is calling on the obligation we owe them by requesting our commander Ludovico Mazzacapo to serve in their military. Is this permanent? A lot of talk about serving one's country in the military as if it was a simple choice. What is the best service you can provide to your country is by serving another. He's the guy who found the source of the of the Niger and Nile rivers. He is a living legend. Brazil, I love you, but you're asking for a lot here, man. We will say yes, and we will send him to the Brazilians. A great man. A very great man. A distinguished one, both militarily and in exploration. An icon of recent military history. But for our oldest ally, we must say yes. Mede Gazzone, well, in an address where he condemned the PSI, which is our socialist party, has begun to mobilize dedicated partisans to oppose the election. An unprincipled Morris, best served not in parliament, but in prison. We're going to increase the momentum for the right. I'm going to use that against them. In collaboration with the right, Matteo Gazzone was secured a deal for cheap and quickly distributed pamphlets in support of the party. Absolutely. Use all those printing presses we have. With the recent expansion in both the production and consumption of explosives in our country, there has been debate on whether the military or the industrial sector should have priority. Industrial sector. Absolutely. So we're going mutual funds. We've always been on the cutting edge of like uh, joint ownership and uh, currency standards, at least in EU4. So we'll, we'll go for mutual funds a little early. We also have literally joint ownership by many of the wealthy and probably middle class people in the Sardinian East India Company. So mutual funds makes sense for us to have them. Oh, my God. Brita, Britain's just manex ma mass annexing Oyo. So is Germany right now. We're getting left behind in the colonial race pretty badly. Chagatai are really going into Congo quickly now, too. There will definitely be a World War One against Britain and Germany now. If for no other reason, then they're going to like have all of Africa. Which will make them even more terrifyingly strong. The only big players right now in it, really, the big, big players are the Chagatai, the Brits, and the Germans. The more minor but relevant players are us, um, the French, Castala, and I think there was someone else too, if I remember. Egypt, technically, I guess. And the Byzantines. With their singular colony in Western Africa. In the Sahara. There's 3,000 Byzantine colonists. We're going to send an expedition on uh, to up the Congo, up the Congo River. We're going to send Absent Minus Flying Through Piss. He sounds much more like the type to lead this expedition. We'll send Carcano. We'll send an expedition to the Pacific as well. Uh, Corradino, Coletta. Two more great expeditions to explore the world set off from... Oh, there goes my board. That's Lombardy and the Papal States gearing up for war. We're going to declare for the Papal States. We're going to fight the Lombardians with them. The Papal States will take Venetia and Lombardy if they win. Which will mean that like the even more land will be supporting us for unification, which is what we want. Alright, mobilize the military! And the Navy. Mobilize everyone. The French join with the Lombards! Oh no. Oh no. Oh shit, we need, we need our Navy back. God damn it. We need a new admiral. We'll hire Augusto Smeducci. He's got a badass beard. I'm gonna promote him a few times so he gets more ships as well. We'll make we'll make him an admiral. You're you're getting promoted out of convenience. Our other admiral is currently lost uh, up up the river of the Congo, so we haven't seen him for a few months. We don't know if he's coming back. Simon Torres finally has the war he's been wanting for a while. He'll be able to go fight in uh in Brittany. Alongside dirty Republicans from Britain. They back down. <laughs> oh, no big war. Lombard, the Queen of Lombardy back down. That's embarrassing for them. To be fair, Britain, us, and Papal States would have wiped the floor of France and Lombardy. They are not what they used to be, neither of them. The Papal States no longer support us as the unification candidate after we supported you in the war? Wow. We got played. By the Pope. Francesco Solaria del Margarita has played us. He was only using the support in order to gain territory in Italy. You jingo as fuck. This cannot stand. 
Mass conscription, we prepare for war. The proud nation of Sardinia will be not used as a political tool in the place of a degenerate pope. 